Hey guys, this is my run on Dimensions and Transcendence Tier 13 in DFF Overall Global and this video will be covering my run on the middle gate or the reckoning stage where as you can see it's a Makina solo run. I did also record the left and right gates so there will, there will be another video covering both the side gates uh, pretty soon as well but for the middle gate I wanted to do this segment first before going into the run mainly because if you are somewhat interested in a Makina solo, it is very, 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 very tight in requirements. And there's two disclaimers that I want to make before going into the setup. First off, um, this is really not an original strategy. There is also a Makina solo in DFFO JP, um, and this run is heavily influenced by that run. Unfortunately, I don't really know the player's name because it's in Japanese characters but I will of course link the Japanese run in the video description as well. So do check it out because that guy is a real genius when it came to the strategy and I definitely will never be able to think of this run if not for his original run in the JP version of the game. The second disclaimer I actually already did, did mention is that the setup is extremely tight. There is very little to no leeway at all. So if you are missing bits and pieces, then I will suggest not to go through with a Makina solo run. Even with that, it is extremely tight. But the, the good thing is that if you did have all the bits and pieces uh, equipped on Makina, then this run should be fairly consistent overall. So coming to Makina setup, first off, regards to spheres, and yes, in this run, spheres are key. The really only mandatory sphere is the B sphere, and there's only one sphere that you can use, which is the Gebrandt full sphere. There is no other sphere. If you equip any other sphere on the B slot, including even a refined Gebrandt sphere, then you will probably not be able to make this run. That's because you really need the 10% Brave Damage Reduction, it is key. And I'll cover more into that when I come to Wave 1 in the fight. And there is unfortunately no other B-Sphere that provides the same level of Brave Damage Reduction. Luckily for the A-Spheres, there are a bit of leeway here. You can potentially use other A-Spheres. I know the JP player use other A-Spheres, but um, the, the key, I guess, when it comes to A-Sphere is that you want to focus on attack power as much as possible and obviously having some sort of conditional that Makina himself is able to fulfill. In this run in particular, the attack power does make a big difference and the higher your attack power, the better it is. Secondly, coming to artifact passives, and yes, this is also quite important, I equipped 3 attack 108 and C50 artifact passives on Makina. The main reason is that this combination of artifact passives gives him the highest possible attack rating. You may be able to get by with one or maybe two uh, attack and max brief artifact passives, but again, the higher the attack power, the better it is. Next up, coming to Makina's gear, you want Makina fully maxed out. And it is mandatory, mandatory to have a 3 over 3 high armor or a blue high armor. And it is more or less mandatory to have a 5 over 5 ultimate weapon. I'm not sure whether a 4 over 5 can make it or not. I don't think it can. But definitely a 3 over 5 will never make it. The, the difference in stats is too huge. The main reason is that in this strategy, even Makina's HP and defense that matters and that's why having the blue high armor and the 5 over 5 ultimate weapon makes a difference because they actually boost his defense and HP. Now coming to the rest of his passives, this is also quite important because of the HP requirement. First off, you want to max out Makina's HP as much as possible. With the synergy boost, and with the Alexander Summon Blessing, you want to have about 30,000 
HP when you are in battle. So you sh with everything equipped, you should be just uh, passing the 30,000 HP threshold. You might be able to make it if you have like 29,000 plus HP, but I think anything below 29,000 and you will probably be at risk of dying because in wave 1, you need to face tank the force attack without any damage mitigation and with only having 49% of Makina's HP. So it is quite tight. You come pretty pretty close to dying. But if you have everything I mentioned here, you should be able to survive the force attack. Now in terms of passives, there's only one passive that you should remove and that is buff speed up. Remove that passive. On top of all that, even the summon bot passives are critical. And I do mean that. I actually did try with different summon bot passives and the run didn't make it. In particular, you want the two life up passives which is Leviathan life up and Bahamut life up. Uh, I can't really find it here. Uh, where is it? Ah, there you go. So Leviathan life up and Bahamut life up. Now I did unequip Ramo evasion up because obviously with Makina you don't want him to dodge any attacks, otherwise he will not be able to counter. I've been actually meaning to change this to another passive for some time, but anyway, if you have any evasion passives, you want to remove them. On top of this, you want every summon passive that ends with resistance up, protect up, or guard up. To make it easier for you to see which passives these are, I will include a full list of all of my summon board passives in the video description as well. So you can just use that as a cross reference. That's pretty much it. There is very little leeway overall in terms of HP and defense and brave damage resistance. You need all of them. And I'll cover a little bit more when it comes to wave one. You can refer to the stats on the left hand side to get a brief idea of where you'll end up. And although it says HP is only 19,000 here, this is before Synergy Boost and this is before Alexander Summon. Finally, in terms of call abilities and summon, there is also very little leeway here. You need Alexander Summon because that is the only source of healing for Makina. Makina doesn't have any healing whatsoever. And you will need to heal the HP damage that you take because the mission requires you to take less than 10,000 HP damage. In terms of call abilities, there might be a little bit of leeway here, but I tried with Hope and it didn't get through. And in the end, I had to use Prish. The main, uh, the main use for the call ability is to get you through wave two. That's it. So if you could potentially try, if you don't have the Prish LD call, you could try maybe something like a Gladio call, but Prish call is the best because while she allows Makina to shave all the enemies brave due to double the brave hits, and that's really the main reason for the call, she also significantly boosts Makina's damage while the call aura is up, and that helps you get through wave 2 without wasting too much of your force time. So Prish call is probably the best call that you can set for Makina here. Doesn't really matter what equipment Prish has, if you have a Fist Ultimate weapon, feel free to step it on, it does make a difference. But the Prish that I have uh, doesn't have any Fist Ultimate weapon, so this is the one that I use for the fight. I'll try to list as many uh, setups as I can in the video description, and like I said, there is almost no leeway here. Uh, if, if you can't meet 30,000 HP, in battle then it's very difficult to get the run through and if you are taking too much brave damage then equally as likely your run will fail and that's it i'll head on into the battle so see you guys there wave one is the most challenging wave for this strategy the good thing is that the most difficult part of the fight is about one minute into the run so it doesn't take that long to see whether your run will fail or not and this means that at least if you do have to reset, it 
shouldn't take too long until you hit the reset button. First off, you want Makina to start first, it's mandatory. Do not use LD. I repeat, do not use LD. Start off with EX, and his EX should break all three enemies giving him another turn, after which you just use the Cyclone Drive on any of the bosses. Then just wait until his turn comes around again. I freeze this part because this is an important threshold of the fight. When Makina's turn comes again, one of the bosses should have the Brave reset as such. Doesn't matter which boss it is, but you need at least one boss to have the Brave reset. On this turn, use Awakening on one of the other bosses that is broken. Makina will get pushed back because of the Doom mechanic. One of the bosses will then apply Doom on him again, which is actually ideal. On this turn, use additional ability. Makina will get broken by Doom again, and he should be eating about a 20 to 22,000 damage lunge. Now this is extremely precise. I freeze here again because this is another threshold. On Makina's turn, he will get HP regen from the Alexander summon and will heal a little bit of HP. The important thing is that after this healing, you want to have about 45-49% to 49 of Makina's HP. If you have anything 50% and above, your run will fail and you need to reset. This is the reason why we took very very precise actions and why we stacked Brave Damage Resistance and Defense in the setup just so that we can manip manipulate the enemy's Brave and get precisely hit for about 20,000 HP damage and let Makina heal back up to less than 50% HP. If you've managed to get this far, there's just one more difficult part coming up. Anyway, once you've regen back your health, immediately use LD. Because right after this, the boss will enter force time. This is the third and final difficult threshold of the fight. You must pray that Makina will survive the force attack. If you did stack all the brave damage resistances, you should only be getting hit for about 2000 brave per hit and you should be able to survive the attack even though it looks pretty close here. All the brave damage resistance and defense that Makina has should allow him to cons consistently survive the force attack. If Makina died from the force attack, it means either you've passed to the 79% HP threshold where the bosses get a stat boost or you are missing bits and pieces of the setup for Makina, so do check back on the setup. If you've managed to make it this far, luckily the most difficult part of the fight is over. You don't have to worry about dying here actually because of the spiral linchpin. Makina will always counter attack the boss as such, and he will also do spiral linchpin, and the combination of these two attacks will always shave the boss's brave down. And if they start their turn without any brave, they will never, never do any HP attacks. Use a Cyclone Drive here on the boss with the highest HP. You want to try to keep their HP as evenly as possible. Now Makina's next turn is coming up and he should get a full force gauge. Before entering force time, check to make sure that his EX is recharged. If his EX is not ready, spam awakening until his EX is ready before you use his force attack. As you can see, I was a little bit shy of 100% here. Do not let the bosses get another round of attacks because they will hit force time again. In order to hit 100% here, I use the preach base call 
and I just spammed Awakening and I think I used his additional ability as well. Just use instant turn abilities until you hit 100% essentially. EX is ready and Force Gauge is 100%, so go immediately into Force Time. Entering Force here will prevent the bosses from charging their Force Gauge, so you will never see another Force Attack. Makina gets Instant Turn from his Force Attack. Use EX on this, do not use BT+. During the next round of attacks, Makina will charge the force gauge from his often attacks. And the goal is that on his next turn, you want to use BT plus for the massive damage because it's boosted by force damage percentage. And after that, in the next round of boss attacks, you want the bosses to hit below 39% then. After the PT+, plus, the boss should be in the low 40s. This part of the fight is a little bit dangerous because not only will the boss get a 5 million HP damage shield, they will get a massive plus 80% to attack and defense. The combination of those two stat boosts is very critical here because as you can see the boss will start accumulating a lot of brave and due to the higher defenses it's now impossible for Makina to completely shave off their brave. Which means that if the bosses take too many turns, eventually they will dump their brave on Makina and end your run. So the goal here is to bring them to 39% before they accumulate enough brave. At 39%, the boss will commit suicide and will bring you to wave 2. If you've managed to reach this far, then you can pat yourself on the back because the most difficult wave of the fight is over and the two waves are significantly easier. Wave 2 is actually the easiest wave of this fight for this strategy. Coming to wave 2, Wave 2 is the wave where the bosses will go on the offensive as you can see and this represents a huge increase in their speed and attack and this means as you can see they will be able to accumulate a lot of brave much more than what Makina can shave but this is where the call ability comes in First off, on Makina's first turn, you want to use LD to apply his Spiral Linchpin. This is quite critical. The boss will counter all of Makina's attack with a counter called Flatten something. Counter Flatten, that's it. This makes it even more difficult to shave their Brave because Counter Flatten deals a ton of Brave damage. On Makina's next turn, where the bosses have accumulated, accumulated a ton of brave, this is where you pop the Prish LD call. Use 
the LD call on the boss with lower breath. After that, just use his Furious Blitz Burst on the boss with the higher breath amount. Now how does the Preach LD Call help here? In case you're not aware, Preach LD Call doubles the amount of breath hits that your character will do, which means essentially that Makina can output double the amount of breath damage while the LD Call aura is up. This allows him to consistently shave off the enemy's breath in Wave 2. And if you've managed to reach this far and have the Preach LD Call aura up, the rest of Wave 2 will play itself out. Because of the high speed that the bosses get, if you look at the turn order bar, they just get a ton of turns. And in between their turns, Makina will always counter and shave off their Brave completely. And similar to Wave 1, as long as they start their turn with no Brave, they will never, never do an HP attack. So you're home free for Wave 2. Coming to wave 3, wave 3 is actually pretty straightforward. The only real danger here is the huge 1 million brave damage shield that the boss gets at the start of the wave. But luckily, it lasts only for 5 turns so you really just have to wait for it to be over. And the other thing is that wave 3 is a huge HP sponge because the boss has 120 million HP. Starting off, what you want to do is just use LD again to apply spiral inch pin and then spam Makina's Furious Blades Burst wait until the boss is not targeting all it is targeting Makina and it's about to one-shot Makina you can see this by the brave numbers on top of the boss glowing purple At this point, the boss will one-shot Makina, so what you want to do is actually hit Cyclone Drive. Cyclone Drive actually has a force break mechanic inside it, so even though it does zero brave damage, it will still instant break the boss. With that, the boss won't dump its brave on Makina, so you're home free. Just repeat the step again, use Furious Blaze Burst on Makina's turn, and if the boss can one-shot Makina, quickly use Cyclone Drive to break the boss. Do this until the HP, sorry, the brave damage shield on top of the boss wears out. Okay, the shield is gone, so immediately pop summon. The goal of summon is actually just to allow you to charge your force gauge while freezing the enemy's force gauge. This allows you to win the force gauge race very easily, especially because Makina still has BT mode that he can use. Just spam Cyclone Drive and EX while you are in summon mode and you should very 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 comfortably hit 100% even before summon mode ends. 
If you do, however, don't go into force time yet. Just spam attacks until you exit summon mode. So you can see I've hit 100% and I still have 2 more turns in summon mode available. But like I said, don't go into force time yet, just play out the entire summon mode. Makina should have 1 turn immediately after summon because you've broken the boss in the summon mode. And during that 1 turn, you go into BT mode. Now the goal of this BT mode is not to deal damage. Don't waste your time trying to hit all the powerful attacks. This is the time where you reapply all his buffs. For example, use his additional ability, hit awakening, use spiral linchpin on the boss to refresh it to 8 stacks for 8 turn duration, and obviously use EX to restore his EX buff on himself. Don't worry about the damage that the BT mode deals, that doesn't really matter a lot. Coming out of summon mode, you are now completely set up, so let's go straight into force time. The rest of the fight is pretty straightforward, just spam Furious Blitz Burst on Makina's turn. Yeah. 
I've run out of BT Aura and it looks pretty close but luckily I managed to close out the fight in the last two turns with a cyclone drive and an EX. If you can't kill the boss in time, and this is why the ultimate weapon is important, once you exit force time the boss will very very quickly hit 100% force time and your run is uh, game over. Anyway, that's it for this run, as always I hope the video has been helpful. And if you enjoyed the content, do leave a like, comment and subscribe, it really helps a lot. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next Shinryu fight. Bye!